What do women like to talk about with men? Well, it really doesn't matter what women like to talk about with men. What matters is what do you like to talk about on a date with a lady? If you're a man who's quite advanced in his career or his business, or you have some nerdy fitness hobbies, perhaps you like playing the piano, maybe you're into martial arts, jujitsu, whatever your particular hobby is. The question is, what do you like to talk about? What makes you feel alive? That's exactly what you should be talking about. Now, obviously this goes deeper, and the content of your words in a dating context matters, especially when it comes to building a man-to-woman connection, but, starting to ask yourself, what should I talk about on a date so that women like me? That's the wrong approach. You don't need to get women to like you. You need to get one particular woman out of all the women in the world to fall absolutely head over heels in love with you. Because most men, most men communicate like lukewarm water, don't they? And what you should be doing instead is you should be like Moses part in the Red Sea. Most men, they're too afraid to disagree. They're too afraid to state a controversial opinion. But you have to understand that she wants to be with a man. Women are attracted to masculine energy. And that has nothing to do with being a dickhead. That doesn't mean you can't be nice. Yes, you should be nice. Yes, you should be kind and masculine. So much of life is way more about being and than or. It's not that I'm gonna be a nice guy uh, or I'm gonna be masculine. No, you're going to be masculine and you can be nice. When I'm with Fernanda, I'm super nice and kind. I give her a million compliments, tell her a million times that I love her, but I'm also really masculine. Now, obviously that manifests in very, very detailed ways, but when you're on a date, when you're during the initial approach with a lady, you should talk about the things that you're naturally interested in because what happens when you talk about things that you're naturally interested in, the way I'm interested in dating and personal development, for example, a degree of passion transfers over to her via mirror neurons. She will pick up on what you're feeling if there's a little bit of rapport. And remember, if there's rapport between two people, the person who's most certain will always influence the other person. Only if there's rapport. So if you ask yourself, what should I talk about so that women like me, that is completely the wrong approach. Because you're trying to please the masses. You're not trying to supposed to please the masses. 99 people, 99% of people you're gonna meet, you're not gonna like anyway. If you actually let that sink in. 90 plus percent of people, while you may wish them well, while you may, while you may interact with them in a very kind and courteous manner, you don't want them as best friends. You don't want them as business partners. And you definitely want them as your life partner, as your woman. So becoming more selective also allows you to become more radically honest in your communication. Being more radically honest in your communication and thereby polarizing is a very powerful way, especially, it's a very powerful tool, especially if you talk about the things you're genuinely interested in. If you're into finance, if you're into business, if you're into law, if you're into personal development, and she genuinely does not give a fuck about it, or she probably isn't right for you. Let that sink in. If she genuinely does not care at all about the things that you're interested in, how on earth are you gonna have a marriage for 50 years? Or a good relationship for 20? How are you gonna stay intellectually stimulating? Because good sex is amazing, trust me, it's really good. But at some point, you need to have a degree of intellectual stimulation on top of that. And it can't just be about finding out new things about each other. That's exciting in the beginning. But if we're talking about the long-term relationship on eye level, it's truly meaningful and fulfilling. Yes, you're gonna seek to find new ways to contribute to her, but simply by finding the other person exciting, by being able to have an intellectual exchange and talk about the things that are happening, building something together, that's a prerequisite. And that starts with her having a genuine interest or at least a degree of open-mindedness towards the things you're already interested in or passionate about. So, obviously, you're gonna, when you're on the first date, you're not just gonna go on a lecture. I've actually once went on a date with a lady where I just got done shooting personal development content for clients many, many years ago, and I was really in a flow. So the date, the 40 minute date in the bar, basically consisted to 35 minutes of me just rambling on about some personal development subjects. I was talking about the six human needs, psychology here, this and that. It was literally just me giving a presentation, and that's not textbook, that's not what you're supposed to do. But I was so congruent, I was so authentic in my presentation on the date that she naturally fell in love with it, and good things happened that night, if you get what I'm saying. So, 
as much as there's a plan that we teach in detail in my coaching program, strategies that will make it so easy for you to build a man to woman connection, you'll get the right words, not to fake something, but to get a structure and a system that'll allow you to build intimacy respectfully and effortlessly as much as that matters and apply for a free initial consultation call. It is also about you allowing yourself to talk about the things you really care about. If you have to talk about astrology, how interested can you really be in a lady? If the most exciting thing she has to share with you is the fact that a Taurus doesn't align with a cat doesn't align with a cancer. I don't even know whether that's true or not. If you have to fake interest, or if she has to fake an interest because she genuinely doesn't care, or she doesn't even have the intellectual capacity to keep up with you, you're gonna get bored. Because you're gonna meet some women who are physically really attractive, but they're just no match for you intellectually. You don't want that. That being said, you also don't wanna have a woman, if you're honest with yourself, who you're intellectually compatible with, but you're just not that excited about when it comes to the physical element of it. You need both. Now, it doesn't mean it has to be a perfect 10, 10, 10, and you know how we rate women on a scale of 0 to 10, not their worth, but in terms of compatibility. Instead of looking at it in terms of a scale from 0 to 10, look at it in terms of 0 to 30. 10 for personality, 10 for intellect, and 10 for, uh, for looks. So these things matter, and if you look at it on a scale of zero to 30, it's a much more holistic view than just looking at the physical element, even though that matters. And a lot of men BS themselves. They lie to themselves and they say, I just love her though. I was in relationships in the past, I was married to a woman where I told myself, I love her though. I may not be that physically attracted to her, but I'm not one of those superficial guys. Looks don't matter that much. Yeah, right. And again, that doesn't mean you have to be with a top model or a super perfect 10 out of 10. Not talking about that. But being really physically attracted to somebody makes a difference. It really matters because you can't BS yourselves. You have an ancient brain and there are certain things that you're going to find more exciting physically about a lady than other things. And you got to admit that. So this whole component, this thing that I'm talking about in these YouTube videos on end at length, Radical honesty, being unashamedly, being unapologetic, and still that doesn't mean that you're not calibrated. Obviously, you're not just going to go on a rant. If she wants to talk about something, genuinely you're going to show interest in her. Genuinely, naturally, you're going to show interest in whatever she cares about, her profession. If she's a lawyer, she's a doctor, maybe she wants to be a stay-at-home mom, whatever you happen to be into. Maybe she's a dancer, maybe she's a pianist, whatever. Obviously, you will naturally be interested in that, but the types of people who come to me, the types of men who become my clients, they don't lack kindness, they don't lack niceness, they don't even lack a natural curiosity for whatever is going on in her life. What you lack is storytelling abilities, being able to communicate your personality authentically and effectively, because remember, you've already done 95% of the work. You're already the type of man who's capable of having a relationship. Now, all you're lacking is confidence, communication, and social dynamics. But when it comes to talking about things that you're interested in, talk about your hobbies, talk about your passions, and also talk about your goals. Tell her where you're at right now, but women value ambition more than current success. It's true. Obviously, current success is absolutely exciting, but no woman wants to be with a man who's successful but lets himself go be that physically or in other ways. That doesn't mean that you can't be fat and have an amazing relationship. I've had plenty of fat clients in the past who were successful. That's not the issue. But obviously you want to work on yourself. A woman wants to be with a man who works on himself, who understands that the best is yet to come. Tomorrow is going to be better than today. And you need a compelling future. If you feel like you're stagnating a little bit, that you're not as excited and passionate about life as you once were, it's because you're not making progress towards a compelling vision of the future. You need an ideal that's worth working towards, and part of that is relationships. Maybe <coughs> most of the areas, pardon me, most of the areas in your life are going really well, but the last missing piece of the puzzle is an amazing woman, and having that woman by your side, amazing. But let me tell you something, what happens to my clients, they get that lady, and they're in a full, in an amazing and fulfilling relationship, and at some point there's a degree of normalcy, and then what happens? Okay, well now I gotta go and shift, and gotta keep going with my career, gotta keep going with my business. You're never gonna stop working on yourself. You're never gonna stop pursuing goals and contributing. And if you're at a point in your life where your basic needs are met, you're doing well financially, your health is taken care of, well, what are you gonna do? You're gonna find ways to contribute to other people's lives. Obviously, you're gonna wanna keep growing for the sake of growing as a person and becoming more of who you can be, but it's also about looking for ways to enhance the lives of other people. That's what it is. What's life about? Making yourself feel as good as possible, having as much happiness and meaning in your own life, and helping other people have as much happiness and meaning in their lives. 
It's about, it's about reducing as much unnecessary suffering as possible and contributing to as much happiness as possible. That's what this game is. And when I say happiness, I don't mean drinking a lot of alcohol and sugar and cigars. <laughs> it's not about short-term pleasures, even though that can matter as well, but it's about meaning and fulfillment and connection. This, if, you look, if you're a little bit bored and you're looking for new things to do, well, look at where people are suffering. So this whole dating and relationship thing for me is absolutely fun. I get to talk to very ambitious, successful, young or really old men and everything and every, anything and everything in between about their dating and relationship life. I get to have very interesting and intimate conversations with them, move them forward towards their relationship goals and help them achieve them. So obviously that's very, very fun. But it's not just fun. It's also really, really meaningful because what happens when we don't take these things serious is we settle for somebody. You're not gonna be alone forever. What's gonna happen is you will settle for somebody. And then you're gonna end up in a relationship where you're pussy whipped, where you can't communicate your needs authentically and effectively, and you'll either become the slave or the tired. Most of the clients who come to me, they have the habit of becoming the slave in the relationship. And that doesn't help you or her. You're not supposed to be the tyrant either. You're supposed to treat her extraordinarily well, but you want to have a relationship on eye level. But you can only do that if you really take this serious and you develop your communication skills to an extent where you have choice. So there's so much suffering. So many women have their own suffering, for sure, but men really suffer in this area. So it makes me feel amazing to see clients end up in relationships all the time. We get invited to weddings, babies are being born. It is so beautiful. Last night, I was watching Chuck with Fernanda, beautiful television show, by the way. I'm not sure if beautiful is the perfect word, but it's funny. I think it's an, actually an amazing television show. It came out in 2007. It's about this nerd herd guy, a nerdy dude who works in a supermarket in the tech section. And then he becomes a spy by accident. It's a really cool story. I don't want to, uh, not jinx it. I don't want to spoil it for you. But I, it's on Amazon Prime. You can look it up. It's a fantastic television show. Because it's really funny and there's a little bit of a thrill to it. And the characters develop in a really, really awesome way over time. So... Fernando and I, we take like an hour and a half, maybe an hour, sometimes only 30 minutes, sometimes I don't get to do it. But we try to take like an hour, two hours, several times a week to watch that. And do you know how beautiful that is to lie on the couch, to have the head of your lady in your lap and to watch a television show and she like rolls up and gives you a kiss and then you chill together. And to have this connection and to have somebody by your side who you really connect with, somebody who you're not only aligned with on a physical level, but somebody who you genuinely trust. Fuck's sake. <laughs> somebody, it's almost like you and her against the world. I actually had a conversation with somebody today and I was saying it's not so much you and her against the world because there's a lot of beautiful people in the world. Why would you be against them? But it's first and foremost you and her. It's first and foremost, you and her. And you're lying there, you're in your castle, you're in your house, you're in your apartment, and you're having downtime, Jesus Christ. And you're really creating, I'm making such a mess here, it's unbelievable. And you're creating plans on how to create a better future together. And because in life, life is a bit about, I'm really bad at smoking cigars, as you can see, I don't do it often. Um, and you're having this downtime because life is about expanding into the world as a man, really penetrating the world, so to speak. But then you also want to have that contraction time where you can just cuddle up, be lovey-dovey and have a really good and beautiful time. And I'm so not manly with these cigars. It's actually unbelievable. I don't care. We're not going to cut this. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. Mateus, can you light my cigar for me? Thank you. <laughs> He can do that for me. Thank you so much. We can leave it rolling, it's okay. If you could light that for me. Thank you. So, if you're lying there with your lady and she has her head in your lap, it's just one of the most beautiful experiences. And then you have a family together eventually and you know you're fully aligned on values. You don't have to argue. You barely ever argue, not never. Obviously, it happens every once in a while because you want somebody, as Jordan Peterson says, who can contend with you. It's just so much happiness. It's so beautiful. And that is not to say that you'll never have challenges or there won't be moments of difficulty. Of course, they'll come. But you'll be able to deal with them in a completely different way. It gives you so much 
resilience. Obviously, as a man, it's your responsibility to bring resilience to the situation. And never use your woman as a source of certainty. You got to bring the certainty to the situation. That's your responsibility as a man. Absolutely. At the same time, you, I get so much oxytocin and dopamine every day when I have like little cuddles in between meetings. But I'm like, oh, she gives me a kiss. And it's, fine. it's just so awesome. And I really want that for you. And you're so close to it. You're so close to it. You're not far away from it at all. And it really just comes down to understanding that this is a learnable skill set. You can learn to improve your communication skills. You can learn to adjust your communication skills to the context because what applies in a general social context, what applies in a business context, doesn't necessarily apply in an intimate context. The way I communicate with Fernanda when we're at home is obviously very different to the way I would communicate in other circumstances. The raw principles, sorry, the principles, for example, raw and authentic communication, they are still the same, but it still has to be tailored to the context. So, coming back full circle, what do you talk about? What do I talk to Fernanda about? For example, we take a break in between Chuck. What do I talk to her about? Obviously, we talk about the business. We talk about what's happening in life, our plans, things we want to make happen but also things that I'm genuinely excited about. I share with her the goals and where we're going. A woman needs to see that you have a vision for yourself. She needs to see that you have a plan. She needs to see you're going somewhere. It's not enough for you to be where you are and the more passionately and confidently you can talk about a vision, the more she's gonna see you as a leader because what, is a, what does a leader do? Many things. One of the things a leader does is communicate a vision with absolute clarity and certainty. And obviously that degree of clarity gets refined over time, but you gotta have a vision. This is where we're going. As a family, as a team, me and you, that's exactly where we're going. That's the direction where we're headed. We're going this way. And this is not you telling her what she has to do, but you're inviting her to join you on this amazing journey. Did you light it up? I think so. Amazing, thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is where we're going. And obviously you'll refine that vision together and you'll negotiate because you won't always be on the exact same page, but you'll fundamentally agree because your values are the same. So for example, these cigars. I usually don't like it. I'm a fan of personal development. I don't like drugs. I don't drink any alcohol. Why am I smoking cigars? For me, it's a weight loss tool because I have around five to six kilos left to lose. And I was losing a lot when I was using cigars for a couple of weeks. Then I was like, ah, I don't want cigars. I want to get rid of that. And then I gained a little bit more weight. Now, obviously, I could just ask my friend who's one of Germany's best or probably the best weight loss coach in all of the German speaking countries, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and perhaps a couple of other ones. I could just ask him, but there's a lot of things going on in my life and I just haven't made it a priority. Is it an excuse? Of course. Do I have to use cigars to lose weight? Absolutely not. Does nicotine reduce a feeling of hunger? Yeah, for sure. So I'm gonna use it as a temporary uh, tool to lose weight and then I'm gonna cut it out, 100%. Because if I have to choose, and it's a false dichotomy, I'm fully aware of it. If I have to choose between having five kilos too much, and not even that much, just a little bit, or just smoking a couple of cigars, I'm gonna do this. Because it's a nice experience, it's fun, it's intellectually stimulating. Peter Atia, I believe is his name, he talks about the benefits of nicotine. Obviously, the smoke is not great for you, right? So I will cut it out, but for now, I'm allowing myself to indulge in that false dichotomy. Now, when Fernanda and I met, I wasn't smoking cigars, I wasn't doing any of that, right? And I'm not gonna make this a habit, I'm not gonna do this for years, trust me. But do you think me and her are having arguments? If I had done this with my ex-wife, this would be a point of contention for years to come. She would get upset about the smell. No discussion, Fernanda would say, David, you shouldn't do this, really. And if I were to let my body go and start doing this every day for years, yeah, obviously she'd like criticize it, but she'd accept it. She knows that I'm, in she trusts me that I can use this as a tool for a couple of months to come. And she doesn't get too upset if my breath smells a little bit bad, okay? But that only works if you have a high degree of compatibility. If you wanna have long-term relationship success, you have to have so much compatibility with the lady. She has to be so excited about you because you have such high degree, such a high level of confidence and your communication skills are so good. She's so attracted to you that little things like smoking a cigar every once in a while, little minor changes in your behavior won't completely throw her off course because she loves you so much. If you want me to help you with that personally, 
Apply for a free initial consultation call. I've now been able to do this with men from 30 countries. Can you do this by yourself? Yeah, but it genuinely might take you seven to 10 years. You can. Nobody needs a coach, but it will save you so much time. There's things right now that you're not even aware that you're fucking up. I'd love to help you on this journey. It's an utter passion of mine. Talk to you soon. Take care. Sue! Sue! <laughs>